you. Perfect. Thanks, Daniel. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Happy New Year. So today uh, we are going to be making hot chocolate bombs. It's the, the hot new trend uh, at the time. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, I like to use these uh, silicone molds. They're very flexible. So they're a little bit easier to, uh, to get out your, your chocolate piece. If you don't have these, then that's okay. Um, I do have these, these are, are quite old, but um, these actually work really well too. This is more of an acrylic mold. Uh, so this one, you would actually have to tap it out on the counter once it's, um, once it's cold, okay? If you don't have either of these things, um, I did a little bit of YouTube investigating and um, they have these called Kinder Joy um, and they are a plastic flexible egg shape. Um, I had no idea these even existed to be honest, uh, but these actually work really well too, okay? If you don't have these either, you can actually make your own mold. Um, so you can do that using tin foil. Um, you could uh, just um, take your piece of tin foil and then fold it and then fold it again um, to make it a little bit durable. And then you can actually use a Christmas ornament um, since they might still be not quite put away yet. And you can actually just shape your, um, your tin foil around your um, Christmas ornament, okay? So just to get that round shape and then just trim with scissors just around the, the top, okay? So you could, you could use any of those options. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I am using um, a 70% dark chocolate. Um, I prefer dark chocolate, but you can use milk chocolate, you can use chocolate chips, uh, you can use white chocolate if you'd like. We're going to be using a chocolate that has cocoa butter. So when your chocolate has cocoa butter, it's gonna need to be tempered. Um, and what that means is that you'll, um, you have to melt it to a certain temperature and then it will be in temper. Um, if you're using the candy melts, you can, you can just melt those and use them. They, they don't contain any cocoa butter, okay? So when you are cutting up your chocolate, um, you wanna make sure that your chocolate is finely chopped. It's gonna make melting a lot faster, okay? Um, so when you're cutting dark chocolate, be mindful because it is quite hard. So I usually just hold a little bit with my thumb and then I just kind of use my knife just to kind of scrape the side and cut down so that you get these really, really fine pieces. Okay, so I've already just taken the time just to do a little bit before coming on so that we can get right to the fun stuff. going to leave this to the side for now. Chef, regarding the tempered and cocoa butter, um, how will folks at home know if the chocolate they have needs to be tempered? Uh, it will just be right in the ingredient list. Um, so for this one, um, the you'll it, cocoa butter is the third ingredient. Okay. So you just want to get a pot of water, a pot of water onto the stove, um, just on a simmer. Okay. You can also do this in the microwave if you have a microwave. Um, I, I don't have one, so I usually just do everything a double boiler, meaning I have a pot of water on the stove with about an inch of water. Now I'll get, show you here. So just a little bit of water in our, in our pot here. Just gonna increase the heat a bit, just so it's at a bare simmer. You don't want it to be at a full boil and then have it coming up over the, the sides. I think that one time we were talking about chocolate, but chocolate and water are not friends, okay? So if you do have a microwave, um, you can put it into um, a microwave safe dish or bowl. Um, the trick there is just to heat up like 10 seconds at a time and stir, 10 seconds, stir, okay? So because we're using a dark chocolate, we actually don't want to heat up our mix past 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Okay, so what happens when you start melting chocolate? Um, basically, the, um, the atoms in the chocolate kind of uh, start to scatter and they're all over the place. And then when you're tempering them, basically you're heating and then generally you're cooling and then you're warming up with just a tiny bit and it's bringing all the molecules back together. And then you'll get that nice crisp uh, snap when you are tempering. I have tempered chocolate. Okay. So I'm just going to put my chocolate on the, on the water bath and then I'm just going to stir. So it's always a really great idea if you have um, a towel, a nice dry towel, you can just put it on the side and then you can have your, you can, when you take off your bowl, then you put it onto the dry towel, okay? So I'm just gonna take mine off and I'm just going to stir because it's gonna have some residual heat from the bottom of the bowl. And I'm just gonna turn down my heat because it's getting a bit, Bit, bit more than a simmer. Okay, so then I'm just going to put it back on the heat. So if you have your thermometer handy, um, we're just going to use one that um, that's like this, and we're going to put it in Fahrenheit. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to take this off the stove. I'm going to give it a stir. You can always use the excuse too that dark chocolate is really heart healthy. So you don't have to feel guilty when you're having your hot chocolate bomb. <laughs> okay, so let's put it back on the heat. So if you find um, that there's steam coming up out of, your, um, out of your pot, then just turn it right down. If you're using a milk chocolate, um, you don't want to go over 85 degrees, okay? White chocolate can be very finicky, so that one is a little bit less even at about 83, 84 degrees. Okay, so I think we're actually there. It's really, really easy to overheat your chocolate. So if we go over, uh, 95 degrees here, then we're just going to have to uh, do a little, um, a little damage work. But that's okay. I usually have to do it. So I still have chunks in mine. So I'm just trying to use my spatula and I'm just trying to press them to the sides of the bowl just to get them to melt a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick check on my temperature. All right, so let's see where we're at. So you don't want it to touch the bottom of your bowl because that is um, carrying heat as well. So I am at 88 degrees, which is actually pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna put it on for about five more seconds. Okay. So if you do go over 95 degrees while you're heating up your dark chocolate, there's something called seeding. Um, and basically what you're doing is you're taking a little bit of your reserved, um, your reserved chocolate, which um, you can use in the way of chocolate chips, or if you just saved a little bit on your board, um, then you're gonna put that in and that's gonna help cool down your chocolate mass. And then once that has cooled down to about, I wanna say about 70 degrees or so, then you're gonna put it back on the stove and you're gonna rewarm it to just under 90 degrees. Chocolate, uh, when you're tempering chocolate, it's actually a lot harder to temper when you're using such a small amount. 
it's a lot easier if you're doing five kilos or so at a time. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good. How's everyone doing there, okay? I think we've had some people turn off their cameras, but the ones we see, I saw a thumbs up. Okay, perfect. So if you have um, little lumps still in your chocolate, you can put it back on the heat, but very, very, very quickly on and off. And if you're using a microwave, start going five seconds at a time. And again, if you're using the Wilton Merkins or the melting wafers, you don't, you can just bypass this step, but just don't uh, overheat your chocolate. I like to use um, like a real chocolate, not well, uh, a quality chocolate, I should say, not a real chocolate, um, because I find that the taste isn't sacrificed when you're using um, a melting wafer. Those tend to be a little bit more waxy on your palate. All right, let's move on to some fun stuff here. So I'm ready to go. Okay, so now there's a couple different ways that this can be done. All right, let me move my cutting board here. Okay, so I'll show you with the silicone molds first. Um, I'm just gonna use a spoon. So there's a couple different methods to do this. So I'll show you, I'll show you a couple. Okay, so you can fill these right up. And then you just use your spoon just to make sure that it's all the way to the edges. Can everybody see that? So you're just spooning it up just so that it's all the way to the edge here. Let's do, do all of them. And then I'm going to pour out the rest into my bowl. I'll show you what I mean. Sometimes you just have to be really careful that you're getting good coverage on the, on the edge so it's not too thin. And then we're just going to pour it back into our bowl and kind of give it a bit of a, just a bit of a shake. I'm really messy when it comes to chocolate, so. I was gonna say, <laughs> Chef, every other thing we've made, you've, it's been about showing us how easy it is to do. This does not <laughs> seem particularly easy at all. It's, it's, it, it, looks, it looks difficult, but it's not. Okay. So if you don't have um, a scraper like this, you can also use a knife, whatever you got handy. Okay, so you can kind of see here, you wanna just check the edges to make sure that they are like a little bit thicker. So can everybody see that they look pretty, uh, they look pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to just set that one aside for a sec. Now, let me see. I'm just going to warm up my chocolate just a tiny, tiny bit, just because I can see it's getting a bit hard. Plus, it's a little bit cold here in the kitchen. I remember it is a, cold in the kitchen, isn't it? It is cold in here. Talk to somebody about that. I used to work at a patisserie and we used to have to do some detail work in with chocolate and we used to have to pipe it. And I always used to get the job of piping the chocolate because my hands were always really hot. Do you mean like if someone had cold hands that that would be too, they'd make it too difficult to work with? Yeah, because they wouldn't be transferring any heat from their hands. Mm. Uh, to the chocolate and then the chocolate just sets. Okay, here we go. So this isn't out of temper. It's just, uh, we're just going to try and beat out some of these lumps here. I'm going to just put it on the water bath for about five seconds. And again, my water is just 
just warm. It's actually not even, um, not even at a simmer. And that is enough. We'll show you how to use it on all the different molds, just in case you have um, one of these that I've got here, so you can see how it works. I think this looks okay. A few lumps, but we'll, we're gonna manage. Okay, so let's use the, um, the acrylic mold. So I'm gonna just do the same kind of thing. At home, I have this great little spoon and it's teeny tiny and it works amazingly well. It's like one of those little dessert spoons. Okay. So this is the same idea. We're just gonna Now, Chef, are we just seeing like two different casing types here? Yeah. I guess so, you need to do two and then eventually put them together. Correct. And then I'll show you the egg. All right. Use my chocolate hands. Okay, so again, we're just gonna do the same thing. Feel free to lick your fingers at home if it's just for you. Okay, so just up to the edge, and then we're just going to try and get out all the excess chocolate. I'm curious to know if who's watching, who's making. I can see the Hallman family as sticking, sticking with their like perfect record, basically, of making everything that you prepared with the exception of a few weeks. <laughs> I can see they're willing to share, and it doesn't look like too much of a chocolatey mess there. I think I see Susan taking notes. I can, I, my daughter is on the thing. I can see her not making chocolate, thank goodness. <laughs> we'll send one home though, Daniel. Are they gluten-free? Um, I don't know if the mix is gluten-free or not. Well, and I, I don't know if I'm about to give my baby a chocolate, okay. a chocolate bomb by the time I get home. Okay, I can always double check for you. Or my wife, I'm sure will receive one. Okay. <laughs> You don't want her up all night? Is that, is that what you're saying, Daniel? The child or my wife? Yes, <laughs> it's the child. No. No. Okay, so this looks pretty good. So we've just got our, all the edges covered here. Okay, and these actually, because it's quite cool in here, look like they've pretty much set. So what I'm gonna do is some people actually use um, a pastry brush and they'll go in and then they'll brush um, extra chocolate in. Um, I find the brush really difficult to clean after. So I don't, um, I don't particularly like that method. So I'm just gonna go in with a spoon just to make sure, let me use this one, that the edges are, are pretty thick because there's nothing worse than going through all the work and then it breaks, which yeah. happens. And the, the inside of the, like the ball doesn't have to be beautiful either. No one's gonna see it. No one's gonna see that. I'll leave a few just in case they do break so we can do some problem solving, okay? Maddie and Mackenzie, are you guys doing this? Okay, I see now the chocolate. Yes, well done. Chocolate is messy work. Yes. I don't know if that's Maddie or Mackenzie, but someone's, someone's Maddie, and it's Maddie. delicious. It's good. Is it delicious? <laughs> okay, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna pop this into the fridge just for a moment, and then we're gonna come back. Perfect. So for those of you who are starting to share sh share your screens, how's it going? Feel free to unmute yourself. If there's any stage in the process that maybe you need Chef Laura to go over again. Um, mm -hmm. Or if you have any questions or you want to show me what you're doing so 
I can help, please feel free. Make sure you keep a little bit of chocolate back for, um, for some drizzling, okay? Mm. And we've got this extra little bit here. I'm just gonna put it right in. Oh, I guess, uh, I guess while we, we can reveal what we're doing next week, Chef. Yes. So Did you want to? You go ahead. It's your. Oh, it's okay. You you do the honors, Daniel. I okay. feel like I talk all the time. That's 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 hopefully the program is going well. If I'm not talking, Chef. So next week we are doing Chef Laura's perfect pizza. So we will be posting the ingredients before Monday evening, but certainly encouraging everyone to check it out. And we will be making pizza from scratch. The perfect timing too for dinner next week. Yeah, what's everyone think of this new time change? Like we uh, obviously, for those of you who are here for the first time uh, may not be aware, but we were previously broadcasting the program at 7 p.m. and people were saying that they were making their second dinner. Um, so we tried to move things up a little bit earlier um, so we could have um, more people participate in actually making dinner or making snacks. Um, so how's everyone enjoying the 5.30? Better? Hopefully when we do more hearty meals, um, you can actually prepare your dinner for your family. I know that hot chocolate balls aren't necessarily a good dinner option. Dessert maybe. Yeah. Certainly a dessert. And how's everyone doing okay? Are we ready for filling? Okay. I'm gonna get my chocolate molds out of the, uh, thank you, out of the fridge. And then we'll do some fun filling. So for the filling, there's lots of, there's, there's a tons of, of options here. So I actually have some semi-sweet mini chips. Thank you. And I have the hot chocolate mix and I have marshmallows. And then actually we had some candy canes too. So we actually, brushed up some candy canes if you want a peppermint hot chocolate. Okay. Um, there's lots of things. It doesn't have to just be hot chocolate. It could be uh, instant coffee. You could do half instant coffee, half hot chocolate. Um, lots of, lots of options there. Okay. Let's see how these turned out. Do you think you could put a, a liquid in the bowl? I have, I have seen that online that some people were, were putting liquids in there. Some I'm not sure. Some ideas are coming to mind then, yes. Yes, yes. Some, some adult fun. But the, um, I think that you can, but I think that you have to use them right away. Okay, so here with the silicone molds, I usually just, oh, see, I had breakage on this one. Maybe they're not ready. Okay, let's see. So this one broke, so I can't use this one. That's okay, I had an extra. I'm just gonna put these ones back in the fridge for a sec. Yeah, you can't make all that mess and then have no end product. Let's try these ones. So with these ones, you can kind of see um, it's kind of hard to sh show you because of the glare, but um, on these ones, you can kind of see when you pull a little bit from the mold, um, you can see how it like it adheres to the mold. So these ones I can see are not quite ready because they're still sticking here. So I'll put those maybe just quickly in the fridge again. Okay, let's try nice. these. Why, why not the freezer over the fridge? Is it, you just want more uh, of it to cool? Uh, you can put them in the freezer. Okay. Um, let's see. I've never done these ones, guys. So this is, this is all experimenting right now. Real time. 
All right, hopefully they don't break. But they had some success on YouTube. Let's see. Oh, this one's still breaking a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this one back in. I'm just gonna fix up my edge here. Maybe we'll put these ones in the freezer and see how that works. Okay. No problem. Has anyone at home had any success getting theirs out of the, uh, no, I see head shaking. Have you tried and they broke? Okay, so we're still waiting. Yeah, they are finicky, finicky little things. Dun, 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 dun. We got one. Okay. Yay. Risk or reward here. It's Ooh, sweating over here, guys. Thin. Okay. Whoa. All right. Okay, two. Wow. There you go. It's like that show, Don't Fall in the Lava, you know? Yeah. Ky Kylie's giving you a yay in the chat. Thanks, Kylie. I'm guessing maybe people have tried this and it wasn't successful. <laughs> Likely not broadcasted, though, to their entire community live and recorded. So good luck. That's okay. I'll be the first to admit that I, <laughs> that I didn't do it right. Okay, perfect. So we've got our nice little shells here. Okay, so the trick to this is, okay, I'm just going to put my clock down. So, so what I've got so here. The winning method so far then. So far, so far that's the winner. Okay, so I have a dinner plate here. Um, it's pretty warm to the touch. I just had it actually sitting on top of my water. Um, if you have a microwave, you're more, just put it in your microwave for about, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds or so. You just want it to be fairly warm to the touch. Okay. So what you're going to do is you want to have a nice, even edge. So you're going to put this on your plate and you're just going to twist. And then you're just going to pull up from the bottom. Does that make sense? So you're going to put them on the plate. You're just twisting here. You're just creating a nice smooth edge and then you're not picking up from the top. You're picking it up almost from like closer to the plate. Okay. Whoop. We've got some graphics going on here. I'm not sure what that's about. You disappeared for a little bit, but you came back. I don't know what happened. We can still see you. Okay. I can't see you, but we will just go from there. All right, so again, we're just going to twist here, creating a nice even edge and then just picking up so that your fingers are close to the, to the bottom. Okay, so I'll just do one more. Okay. So still nice and warm our plate. All right. So let's maybe have a check to see if the other ones are ready to go. All right, so these ones I actually we put in the freezer. So let's give these a go. So these ones just generally, they just, tap out. Woo. There we go. Bravo. All right. So we will do the same with these ones. Remembering just pick up closer to the bottom. The reason we're doing that is that we don't misshapen the sphere. Okay. Gonna let those cool down for a sec. Oh, thank you. All right, let's give these a go. See if these work. I'm just gonna try and nice job, Maddie McKenzie. I just saw one look pretty good there. Awesome. Good job, girls. 
All right, I'm just trying to break this away from the mold. And again, I'm sorry, I never tried this method before, so we'll see how it goes. Ta-da! Yes, look at that. All right. Someone's got music playing, it's nice. It's uh, it's me in the hall, it's the- uh, oh, Was it you in the hall? Nice. I think it's me, it's the community center's music. Oh. Like, am I on mute? You can hear uh, some soft, soft rock. Nice. Okay, so these worked. Look at this, we are good, yay. Okay, we're gonna follow the same process. Oh, that is exciting. I love it when things work out, especially when people are watching me. <laughs> okay, so let's fill these guys up and see what we can do. So I'm just actually going to use the back of my mold here and I'm just going to set them in like this because they can be very wobbly. So you're just gonna put in about a tablespoon of your powder of choice, whether it be instant coffee or hot chocolate mix and you can even make your own hot chocolate mix if you wanted to it's just basically uh sugar and cocoa and um i like to make my own vanilla sugar that you can add looks like the hallmans have coffee crisp hot chocolate that's pretty cool. oh nice I've never seen that all right so i'm gonna add a little bit of chocolate chips awesome. to mine just for fun and then I'll put in a few marshmallows. And then maybe we'll try a small one with some candy cane. Okay, so now we've got our plate and we are going to, again, rewarm on our plate so that it creates a seal. So this one, again, we're picking up from the bottom and then you're going to line it up, okay? And then you don't want to do, you want to do a gentle press, okay? So you're going to be pressing a little bit on the sides and a little bit on the top. Does that make sense? Can everybody see? Maybe I'll go like this. So I'm just doing a gentle, gentle press. And what's happening here is the chocolate is, um, has melted. So it's creating a nice tight seam. Okay, so let's do another one. Okay, so again, we're just going to line up. And then I'm just going to do a gentle press. Okay. And then you can see the nice seam there. So when you shake these, then you shouldn't have the powder coming out the sides. And if you do, you know what you do? You just take a little bit of this melted chocolate and then you can just um, make sure it's not super hot because it's gonna melt your, your chocolate ball, but you can just do some patchwork if you have any gaps, okay? But it should seal pretty well this way. Okay, so let's try the other ones. All right, so let's try these little little ones. And we'll try our egg. So let's put in some chocolate chips just for fun. And we'll put in some mix. All right, people, while Chef Laura is doing this, I want to start seeing maybe some of the, uh, the outcomes of the home chocolate balls. Let's do the egg with some candy cane. Very nice, Maddie McKenzie. Looks like we got half of a milk chocolate ball going. The Hallmans, I think they uh, should start like a social. It looks like they're like product brand amb ambassadors right now. They should start like a social media account for child bakers. Baking with the Hallmans. We'll do this one plain. They're a bit finicky, but um, but they're not not as hard as what everybody thinks. Okay. 
I'm so glad this Kinder Egg one worked out. That's really fun. So how fun would this be for Easter? There's um, actually, there's food color that you can buy um, from some specialty stores. Um, and they're a fat-based uh, color so that you can use them with chocolate. So you can actually color all your chocolates. Okay, so fun. All right. So now, I'm just gonna warm up my chocolate just a touch here. And then we can do some drizzling on the top. You can garnish with sprinkles. You can garnish with candy cane. You can garnish with some chocolate chips. Or if you have white chocolate, that would be nice too to drizzle on top. But maybe we'll do a few. Maybe we'll do, let's use these ones. These are fun. My chocolate's super hard right now, so I'm just going to melt it a bit. So again, if you had um, had some that didn't seal very well, then just use uh, some cool down chocolate just to help bind your seal. Maddie McKenzie, are you guys showing your final product there? You guys are done? Holy smokes. Holy rock stars. That looks pretty good. Do you want to show it again so Chef can see? Okay. Sure. There you go, Laura. Oh, I can't see. Oh, no? Oh. We sprinkle candy canes on it. Candy cane. Oh, those are gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, super job. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my gosh. You're going to enjoy those later. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is it your yeah. first time make, is it your first time making them? Yes. That is super. We thought it was going to be easy. It's not so easy. Yeah, it's it can be a little bit a lot of patience, right? Yep, yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thanks. Nice job, guys. Um, like we, we often do, if, uh, if people want to send uh, pictures of their finished product, um, when we post the videos on YouTube or the video of, of our presentations on YouTube, oftentimes I'll stick uh, finished products at the end of it just to kind of show off what, what some of our, our attendees made. So feel free to send pictures of, of finished products to public.art at oakville.ca, public.art at oakville.ca, and I'll make sure I edit those into the end of the videos. Oh, thanks. Okay, so I've got my chocolate melted here. So I'm just going to use my spoon and I'm just going to do just a light drizzle. Nothing too fancy. All right. Again, making sure that your chocolate's not too hot. And then maybe we'll sprinkle oh, candy cane here. We'll do some chocolate chips on these ones here, and then maybe we'll do one with regular sprinkles. All right. And then does everyone know what to do with your chocolate bombs after you finish making them? You can heat up um, a um, milk on your in your microwave or on your stove. You can use milk, you can use coconut milk, you can use a, all kinds of dairy alternatives. And then you put this in the bottom of your mug. I'm sure you've seen it all on Instagram. And then you pour your hot liquid over it and then the chocolate melts and the marshmallows and all the goodies come out. Yeah, it's super fun. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've taken your spotlight off here. Anyone else have any other um, finished products they can show us? Anyone brave enough to share? I see, I see the Holmans have left their beautiful kitchen on display. I see my daughter is making an immense mess with whatever she's eating. Maddie and Mackenzie are probably off eating their hot chocolate balls. Well-deserved, everyone. <laughs> Grace, how did it go? Oh no. Down. Okay. 
Did your chocolate just not set? It got stuck in the mold. Oh, it did. Okay. Okay. That Any happened to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> Any tips for avoiding that? Um, no, just to start again, unfortunately. Um, maybe if you are having troubles with it coming out of the molds, um, maybe use before you um, start using your silicone molds or your acrylic molds or whatever you're using, it's nice to take a soft um, dry cloth and you can actually polish your molds so that um, there is no debris in there. Um, but yeah, you know what, it's just, I think it's just depends on the chocolate too. So sometimes if it's not tempered correctly, then it will I don't know if- you um, Bring it back out if it does snap. So chef, it sounds like- um, Oh, I'm I, don't, I don't know if it's- uh, Frozen? Any yeah sorry chef it sounds like we were losing you there and now we've we've lost your video um but that's okay we are, oh no there we are you're back now i see you Aww. hi everyone <laughs> uh is any questions Aww. before we let chef uh we let chef laura go and we let everyone go enjoy their um their hot chocolate bombs i see yeah <laughs> I see uh, some messy hands, which is great. It looks like someone even already poured those. Oh, Maddie McKenzie, nice geez. job. How did, was it cool when they all melted? Awesome. Ooh. Awesome. Well, congratulations, guys, and enjoy it. And please join us uh, next week when we do uh, Chef Laura's Perfect Pizza. Um, looking forward to that. Uh, and then also, um, because this is a new session, I, I, I thought I'd share the reminders that we are we are going uh, offering a number of free programs. So on Monday at noon, you can join us for wellness and music. We have a local musician, Diane Dumas. Uh, she performs songs, tells stories about them, and you know really lets uh, residents connect with with other storytelling. I think we had about 15 other guitarists come on and play with her on Monday. It was it was really quite lovely. Uh, Wednesday at 1:30. Uh, we have Exploring Art with George Sanford. George is a, uh, he's like a radio professional and he just tells beautiful stories about art and places and people from all across time and space in the world. And it's a, it's a lovely way to spend an hour. I, I like to think of it as like, it's like a local podcast. And then obviously Chef Laura. And then Thursdays at uh, 1130, you can come in for a gentle stretch in mindfulness. And that's with Christine Sopeju. And that's really uh, a time to meditate and reflect while getting a little bit of light exercise in. So hope you join us at any of those sessions. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Please enjoy your evening. And I'm sorry to all the Habs fans that are watching, but go, let's go. <laughs> Bye, Thanks, everyone. everyone.